All right, everyone, welcome back to another Coyote Radio Show and podcast. Uh, great guest today, Jake Cohen's with us. I just recently got back from Laurel Cove Music Festival in uh, Eastern Kentucky. Wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, that was my second time attending and first time seeing Jake there perform. And I could tell you he had the audience captivated. Uh, you could hear a pin drop. Everyone was listening, watching, and, you know, actually paying attention to the music instead of just partying the whole time. So uh, that's a that's just a great thing. And I'm sure he appreciates that big time. Um but we don't have a lot of time with him, so we're just gonna do a short little session, get get some uh, info about what his plans are, recording, touring, that sort of thing, and uh, maybe get a little bit about his background story of how he came to be. But uh, his voice is amazing. If you haven't checked him out, I, I highly suggest it. This kid's gonna be around for a long time, I can already tell you. Uh, so, pleased to have him. Also, while we're at it, hit the likes, subscribe button notify notification button all that good stuff we're on instagram facebook um yeah the support goes a long way you can listen to all the episodes on all streaming platforms spotify itunes you name it and then of course youtube you can watch the show so all right i think that covers it let's go talk to jake and see what he's got to say All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. Special guest here today, Jake Cohen's with us. Uh, just a few days ago, we were down in Laurel Cove and uh, witnessed you play for the first time. And uh, remarkable, man. Amazing voice. Um, if if you could, just kind of start at the beginning. How'd you get into music? Kind of your inspirations and, uh, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. When I was 10 years old, my great grandma gave me her old guitar, her childhood guitar, and a poster with a bunch of chords on, like a bunch of chords on it. And I put it on my wall, uh, my other, and I, uh, put it on the wall of my house in my room. And I, I basically just started filling around with chords and trying to figure out how to play the guitar. And eventually I learned how to play uh, E minor chord. That was the first chord that I learned. And from there, I, my parents bought me a new guitar. It was, I don't even know. You would, I don't even know what brand of guitar it was. It was better <laughs> than the other one, but it was, it wasn't the greatest. I'm grateful for it though. Um, <clears throat> but from there, I really progressed. Uh, I played my first show to Fruit Market when I was like 12, I believe. Um, my second show though, uh, when I was at that Fruit Market, I was playing in between the breaks of a bluegrass band called Buzz Collective and frontman Buddy Dunlap has been my guitar mentor, musical mentor, songwriting mentor for forever since then. Uh, <clears throat> he, he took me for my second show. I opened for his band uh, in a barn. They do this little event there called Bluegrass at the Barn every month or they did every month, but it was a big deal. Um, there was about, I think there was 400 people when I played there. That was a huge deal for my second show. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah, that's <laughs> Mind awesome. Mind you, I was, not, I was not good at all. Uh, I had absolutely no talent at that time. <laughs> it was not a good, uh, you know, people loved it, though, because they were pretty drunk. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I've been, I've been here, I guess, I mean, I heard rumors. I heard mm-hmm. something like, oh, he didn't even start playing till uh pandemic hit and he just had all this time first time he ever picked up a guitar i'm like really no that's not uh rumors are flying about you man (laughs) i around with the guitar from 10 to like 13 or like 10 to 12 and when i was 12 i first learned how to play a couple of songs you know what i mean like i fully understood the guitar so i've only really been playing guitar like guitar wise for four or five years tops uh but like yeah yeah I wasn't really playing guitar when I was 10. I just had one. I was messing with it. You know? <laughs> right. It's like me with this banjo. Yeah, I've had a banjo for like 10 years, but if you compiled how many years. times I've played it, <laughs> it's not that long. Yeah, I can't do nothing with the banjo. <laughs> <laughs> so, bad. so what kind of music were, were you listening to growing up and stuff? Like, what what do you like? Well, the first things that, I, that really caught my attention was like 50s rock and roll, uh, Jerry Lewis, stuff like that 
I was really into that for a pretty good period of time. And then, you know, Johnny Cash was a big yeah. deal, big influence for me growing up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I assume at Laurel Cove, you're a fan of the Red Clay Strays. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They good killed good. it, man. Yeah, they kill it every time I've seen. That's like my fifth time seeing them, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. So great you, you started uh, working your way through the guitar for, over the years. Did you approach music more vocally? Were you more interested in the song and how you sounded? Or was it like, hey, I want to play guitar, but I'm going to sing to it? Which came first? I wasn't. I was playing guitar first because there was no... I couldn't sing, you know what I mean? Uh, there was no <laughs> singing ability. I was terrible. Uh, I don't know. I just got better with time I'm trying to sing, I guess. Well, you can sing now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's... Um, There's old yeah. videos. And you can see the first video of me playing a song. You would. You, it's on Facebook. You can find it. It's there. <laughs> it's so, <and> you'll, <laughs> she didn't take it down. You didn't want to show your progression. <laughs> nope. That's awesome. So um, at this point, you know, you've had a hit, a couple of hit songs that kind of went viral for you uh, as far as YouTube goes with um, Frostbite being a wonderful song. Uh, I don't even know yeah. how many plays it's got, but it's a lot. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And, so it's uh, got, I think it's five million across Facebook and Instagram. Really? Yeah. I remember people sending it to me when it came out because, you know, they knew I did this and they're like, oh, you got to check this guy out. And I was like, what the hell? It's <laughs> <This is> amazing. <laughs> uh, so how did that change your perspective with everything? Were you just playing music for fun and doing shows here and there for you know just messing around or were you like i'm gonna make a career out of this at the beginning we, or you're just now taking make, it serious uh i was taking it seriously i was doing shows all around the uh the area locally and stuff and i was venturing off into i think i I played master musicians festival that was one of the first shows i did outside of the winchester area but um <clears throat> Yeah, Frostbite took everything to a whole new level, took it to a national level, you know what I mean? Took mm -hmm. it to a pretty much a worldwide level. Uh, so did Heart of Stone, really. Both of those videos combined, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal. Uh, everything is just a completely different level than it was a year ago, I'd say. It's something I wouldn't even have been able to imagine at that point. Yeah. So since those have dropped, what types of changes? You've you've been signed to a label, right? Did I read that right? No, signed no? to a That's uh, another booking, rumor. booking agency. Uh, okay. I, I've talked to labels. Uh, I can't really talk about that, I don't think, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to labels. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm signed to Wasserman, which is like they book shows. You know, they book shows for like Tyler Childers and Coulter Wall. Right. Uh, yeah. So, um, like I mentioned, we just got done with Laurel Cove. Where, are you, where are you heading next? What's kind of like the summer schedule look like for you? I don't know. I really don't. I, I, there's a lot of shows, <laughs> man. Festivals here, I'm there. Sure. There's but, festivals. There's yeah. That's awesome. So, are you going to um, start working on a record, or are you kind of compiling yeah, everything was, to start? Yeah, there will be a. I'll, I'll be working on a record. Any details? Yeah. I don't think so. No. No. <laughs> Still early stages. Yeah. Okay. Ish. Early ish. Right. Would it be uh, kind of solo stuff, or would you do it with a band or a little bit of? It'll be. Or... Yeah, both. It, it 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 just depends on the song, really. Uh. It'll be whatever, whatever. Uh, I have visions for all the songs. You know what I mean? Like none of them are really acoustic. I mean, I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say here. Like Frostbite, that's not an acoustic song, but I can't play a whole band by myself. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm sure you got it all mapped yeah. out of what part should be where, and you know, <laughs> that would be like a relief for you to put that out on a record. I'm sure once you can. 
Definitely. master it and piece it together. Yes. So uh, you're in Virginia there. Mm-hmm. And that whole region, I would say, is my favorite type of music, uh, Appalachia region. And, you know, there's red dirt country, there's cowboy country out west, western swing, and there's all that good stuff. But I feel like the region where you're located in comes some of the best music, Kentucky. Um, Absolutely, yes. Appalachian music is definitely the superior subgenre of country music at the moment. Yeah. I think of all time, really. That folk stuff. That, right. Yep. It's like the heart of I wasn't gonna country. Push it to you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's all time. <laughs> you know, and it stems from just like hanging out and playing with family and friends. That's that's where it all starts before it goes massive. Um, that's what true music is to me. So that's why I think I've always been drawn to, you know, that style and kind of the things that you've been putting out there so and you're doing a great job uh no vocal lessons or anything like that just never had any been working on it yourself yeah that's great yeah your emotions there for sure uh you know there's a lot of people that can sing really well but if i don't believe them it doesn't really work you know what i mean uh yeah you're right so I, I, I feel your emotion and yours, and it's it's wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate Most, that. My dog's <laughs> I'm At Laurel Cove, it was interesting because when you were up there doing your thing at the Creekside stage, it wasn't like the other performances that were down in that area. Um, I You could literally hear everything. Everyone was so quiet all the way back down. Even to the vendor booths, they were just like, what is, you know, felt like we were witnessing yeah, I, something very special. I was very pleased with that crowd. Yeah. Great community of people. Definitely. Um, what else are you looking forward to as far as, obviously, you want to make a record. Is there anyone you would like to collaborate with at some point or, or a special venue one day to make it to? Like, what kind of goals are we looking at? Well, I would say uh, I would say the caverns, but I'm playing the caverns. That's cool. Uh, that's You're playing be fun. Yeah, this is one of them. Yeah, I'm opening for the Steel Drivers two nights. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Let me. Is that is that Red soon Rock's or is it? Everybody's favorite. Red Rocks would be nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I was fun. reading some comments like from like I said those viral videos. They're like this this kid's gonna make it in like two years. We'll be at Red Rocks. So we'll see. <laughs> it's doable, man. It's out there. It's definitely doable. Um, so your writing process, are you like, uh, kind of tell me about that. I'm really interested in that style for a lot of different artists, especially singer-songwriters. Uh, a lot of people ask me that because my songs are so sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you that I'm I'm dramatic. <laughs> you know that, you know that uh, I remember I, I've told people before I wrote Frostbite because it was cold in this room. I was cold. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it. <laughs> Damn, you must have been that cold, man. <laughs> Super cold. <laughs> cold in my heart. <laughs> so that's just brutal honesty right there. You're you're just dramatic with a pen and pad. Yep. Do you do you uh sit down with the guitar and just like map out a song and then put lyrics to, or you write the lyrics first on like napkins, or they just come to you? I write melodies first because um I try to write something new usually. Uh, I don't like repetition, and I I do re- I do repeat when I do song like when I write songs. I I know some of them songs sound pretty similar, but uh I hate that. <laughs> I, got to make something new so i'll just sit there and try to make something sound different on the guitar before i can write anything yeah i get that i don't understand that well that that will help too especially once you start adding other elements as far as instruments that will help you know dissect songs and you can add different parts here and there and get totally different sound definitely yes 
Yeah, figure out that banjo, like you said. <laughs> yeah. That will switch it up for sure. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, trying to think. That's the main. That, those were the main things I wanted to ask you, man. Those are like short and sweet yeah. to the point. Um, just keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of momentum right now. I see a lot of a lot of potential. I'm, I'm sure you're getting amazing feedback back. So. I'm sure the family's proud you're with your whole family this weekend. Yeah. 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 That's always well, a fun little road trip. My mom didn't pay to that one. My dad and my brother stayed home. I was with my mom and my girlfriend. That's it. Yeah. I, I bet they're just tickled to death. <laughs> so. All right, Jake. Well, we'll yeah. be in touch. Hopefully, uh, I'll catch you at a show in the future, man. And uh, Thanks for talking with me. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anywhere people should follow you, uh, you know, obviously you got social media. Do you have a website or anything that people should keep oh, an eye on? I have, I have a uh, a link tree in my Instagram bio. Uh, I don't have okay. a uh, website yet, but it's close. I got Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, TikTok, whatever you got. I got it. <laughs> so, yeah, just follow me everywhere, you know. <laughs> right on. Well, we'll support you on our end and uh, – Keep Appreciate it up. You. Thank you.